Hey there. I'm uh, walking on the path back uh, to the village that I'm staying in. A little village called Vashisht, outside of uh, the larger town of Manali. If you read and follow the Bible, then you are reading channeled material. God did not come down from the heavens with a pen and write the Old and New Testament. The Bible is written by human beings, interpretations of the Word of God and of the angels. It is a channeled document, or maybe it's just people's fanciful notions and, and uh, um, intellectual ponderings of life in the universe, but if it is believed to be an attempt at humans transcribing the Word of God, then that means that it is a channeled document. And there is much mention in the Bible of angels, of course. So who are the angels? Do you suppose that the abode of the angels is somewhere in our earthly clouds? That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. That if there are angels, and I believe that there are something you could call angels, otherworldly uh, beings, I don't think they're hanging out up there. They probably have a home somewhere else in the universe, another star system, another planet, far away from here, and maybe it's the Pleiades. Maybe that's one of them. The Pleiades or Sirius or Arcturus or whatever. When they're talking about the angels in the Bible, they might be talking about the Pleiadians. So it seems odd to me to speak in, in religious spiritual terms, espousing the Bible, yet saying these modern day channelings of otherworldly beings seeking to communicate to humans should all necessarily be ignored and um, viewed with extreme doubt and suspicion as to any authenticity. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, let's see, I'm going to get across this river. It'll probably get in the way of uh, hearing me. Or a creek, rather. So how then does one determine whether a message is legitimate, is to be listened to or not? And there is no simple answer on that, in my view. You can't count on the Bible as all being true. It's all written by humans. The best you can do is to Use your own cognitive abilities, your own perspective, your own experience, your own beliefs, and ascertain to the best of your ability whether something that someone else is saying makes sense to you and is something that you might like to incorporate into your worldview. There is no document out there, there is no message or teaching out there that you can be 100% certain is 100% correct and therefore you just follow the directions and you'll be fine. Um, that, is, that is even missing the point, which is to honor your own sense of truth, to come to your own personal view of the world and life and how to approach it, knowing that it isn't going to be all right, but that's the best you have to work with. The point of the spiritual path is not to find the right teaching and then to follow it to the letter and 
in doing so, you can't go wrong because you have the right teaching. All teachings are imperfect. All teachings are a mix of uh, truth and falsehood. So forget about the concept of the right teachings and the wrong teachings. Seek which teachings make the most sense to you and try them out. See if that approach works in your life. And what else can you do really? There are no guarantees. Um, so I think that it is foolish to disregard all of these um, channeled messages from the Pleiadians and, and others and say, well, they're all necessarily manipulative and distorted and um, can't be counted on. But the Bible is, is uh, certified, it's verified. Therefore, you know, read the Bible studiously. Come up to your own conclusion. If you're curious, curious, check them out. Take a look at what they're really saying and determine for yourself whether it makes sense to you to follow some of the ideas uh, prescribed in those in those messages. So there we go. I'm gonna say.